Hey Brendan, it's Thursday. I really liked your video on American politics and how we are the problem. Um, American politics is a messy and complicated thing, but I think you're right in saying that it ultimately lies in the hands of the people. Today I'm going to talk about the book Into the Wild. So for those of you who don't know, Into the Wild is a book about a gentleman. This is a real story, a true story, who after graduating from Emory University with $24,000 in hand, decided that he would go on a trip. And there's some confusion as to why he went on this trip. We'll kind of get into that in later videos about this subject. But uh, uh, he was searching for truth and for meaning. He wanted to, to experience the world in poverty so that he could be filled up um, by others and by people. So to kind of give you an idea, he started out in the south and he drove his beloved Datsun car, which was beaten up old, but he had bought it himself. It was something that he relied upon. And he decided to move through and across the country. And eventually he wound up in Arizona. And in Arizona, his first little tragedy happened. He parked his car in a flash flood area and a flash flood did come and knocked his car completely out. He spent a lot of time wandering around from that point. His car was eventually found and his parents were notified. During all of this time, he hasn't kept contact with his parents or his sister. He hasn't sent any letters to them or said anything to them at all. In fact, he had his mail held at the post office so that his parents and sister wouldn't find out that he had been out of touch until about three months into his journey. Now after Arizona, he had spent some time tooling around the Southwest and including going down into Mexico and trying to come back through the border without any identification. In his time tooling around, he came across a group of, um, I think you could probably term them as hippies who drive around and, and uh, move around in mobile camps throughout the Southwest. He helped sell books, he helped to do odd jobs for other people um, in this time period. He also spent some time working at Burger King or McDonald's, fast food joints, but he left when they told him he had to wear socks. Somewhere along the way here, Chris McCandless also changed his name to Alexander Supertramp. Anyway, Alexander was moving around the country. He wound up in the South Dakota, North Dakota, Montana area helping harvest in fields. And he met some good friends there, and those friends he actually kept in contact with as he tooled around the United States. Eventually, he came back and told this friend, Wayne, that he was going to make a last great adventure to Alaska. One of the surprising things about this story is that he was so successful, what we consider successful in life, and yet he cho chose to sort of put that all aside and pursue this great adventure, searching for truth, beauty, or reality. Now, he was trekking all over the world, and he eventually went through Canada and into Alaska in order to start this last great adventure. With nothing really but a pack on his back and a 22 gun, he marched out into the wilderness. When he marched out into the wilderness, he had a very limited amount of food in his pack. You see, he wanted to live off the land for about three months, so he had some dried rice with him, but he didn't have any significant source of nutrition with him. He was going to live off the land and off the game that it provided and off the plants that it provided. Now, Alexander Supertramp wasn't a fool. He was actually aware of native species in the area and sort of familiar with what was going on. He spent a lot of his time reading and writing throughout all of his journeys, and indeed, during this time period, he probably spent the most time reading and writing. Along with him, he brought a camera, so we have some photos that can tell us a little bit more about him. And as he's hiking through the middle of the wilderness, he comes across a bus. Yes, he came across a bus, an empty bus with a camp stove in it, something to burn wood in, in the middle, just in the middle of the wilderness. And this is where the story gets a little dark. See, he lived in the wilderness for a while. He shot a moose, ate some of it, the rest of it rotted, which he considered a great tragedy, um, particularly because he needed that food to survive. He couldn't make it out. He couldn't make it out because the river that he had crossed in coming in was small and and uh, full of ice, and so it was relatively easy to cross. And in the springtime, when he tried to get out, it was flowing high, almost overflowing, and he certainly couldn't cross safely. So he went plant gathering, and it turns out that he mistook one of the plants, and it was a very close mistake. There was only one subtle difference between the two plants, between something that was nutritious and something that was poisonous. Now, this particular type of poison actually freezes a person's digestion. It makes it impossible for their body to gather nutrients, including the most important nutrient of all, calories. He literally starved to death because he couldn't get enough food, and even if he could get food, he couldn't find the cure that would heal him and allow him to live. And I'm just going to give a brief summary here of the different responses I've heard to this story. Some people express just how idiotic this kid was. He had everything, and he threw it all away, and how terrible. It was full of hubris. Another reaction people have is this is a, a story of, of beauty and of truth and of richness. This young man striving out into an adventure to figure his life out and, and it's too bad that it ended in tragedy. Others talk about, you know, he did take a risk and there was a benefit for it in him to take that risk. For him, the risk was the benefit. It was the adventure. And the problem with risk is sometimes it can go wrong. It's a matter of personal interpretation that allows us to explain this story. If you haven't read the book, it's called Into the Wild. Jenna Nell's out.